Hello everyone and welcome to this paper presentation for MMSYS 2021. My name is Simon Wunko. I'm working for TNO in the Netherlands and today I'd like to present to you our web-enabled system for immersive communication that allows interaction and communication and virtual reality with the help of photorealistic volumetric user representations. Before I start my presentation, I give thanks to my team at TNO that was involved in this paper, in particular, Rick Hendricks, Karim el Asal, Hans Stocking, Sylvie Dijkstra, Frank de Haar, and Omar Niamut. Also, I'd like to mention that part of this research was funded by the European research project VR Together. The VR Together project uh, finished, but the website is still running, so please feel free to check out some of the material of that project. I particularly like to give thanks to our colleagues from Via Access Ocker, the Orange Group, who helped with the remote testing between France and Netherlands. Not just because of the current corona pandemic, but in this day and age, remote communication became increasingly important. For me personally, it's also really great to see how much uh, we can actually do remotely and how well we can be connected to each other remotely. However, what the past over one and a half years working extensively only remotely has shown us is a lot of limitations and gaps in the current technology. For example, think of a communication that is just one-on-one -on -one video call that goes very well. But if you add more people, if you have group discussions or other more complex communication scenarios like brainstormings, negotiation and vivid discussions, you very quickly find yourself in the current limitations. What we really want to achieve that you have more natural interactions, that you have a higher immersion and more social presence in your communication. So what we like to do is we want to extend current video conferencing solutions in order to allow immersive communication and communication in virtual reality. And our research in particular focuses on how to uh, create the systems that allow volumetric and photorealistic representations of users. There's some examples shown here in the slides of what I mean by that. In the past, our research focused on 360 degree experiences and how to place users with transparent sprites. You can also find a couple of references in the paper about that. And what we present in this paper is more relating to how to represent users in 3D and volumetric based on one or two cameras. If you're interested in volumetric user representations, I also recommend you to look at our demo paper. When we look at the research we present in this paper, one of our main aims was to bridge the gap of current video conferencing solutions and how we can move that to immersive media. And we were guiding our research according to these three research questions. First of all, if we have color and depth information that we acquire by depth sensors, how suitable is that for representing users, but also how suitable is such a RGB plus depth transmission for a communication system. The second question is when we want to build such a new system, in particular a web-enabled communication system, what are the new building blocks and what do we need to extend on current technical solutions in order to allow these new immersive communication scenarios. And thirdly, if we have such a new communication system, what are the performance requirements and how does such a system utilizes GPU, CPU and network resources? On this slide, you can see the architecture for our new virtual reality communications system. On the left side, you see that the capture process is becoming a little bit more complex. This is we don't only deal with normal webcam feeds, but we deal with RGB plus depth sensors and a new processing block in order to at least extract the background from the user, but also to do new mappings for the depth to make it easily transmittable over existing 2D transmission links. In our case, we're dealing with a web client. That means we need a web server, in our case that is a node server running a JavaScript 
client based on React and some other components. The details can also be found in the paper. And if you further look at the system side, there's a couple of changes. We are using WebRTC transmission. That means for peer-to-peer, -peer, that is very similar to what is existing. But we also injected a multi-point control unit called MCU. And this MCU allows us to combine streams on a central node in order to reduce the performance requirements on the end client and support more users. Further, there is a new central component that glues all the different components together, which we call a media orchestrator. And this media orchestrator has uh, a couple of roles. It doesn't have too much logic inside, but it is very important in order to create communication sessions and to maintain the sessions in, all, in, in terms of where to place users, how to place users, how to synchronize different medias and different media playback. But it can also cope with more complex scenarios like screen sharing and other features you would expect from a normal video conferencing solution. But then with the extension to deal with that on a three-dimensional level to allow immersive media scenarios and communication in the scenarios. One aspect of this orchestration is to actually build rooms in a way that different users are represented and in, are able to interact in the same virtual environment. For that, we built a metadata model that you can see here on this slide. It supports various different uh, media types and various different room models in order to build uh, experiences from 360 degree up to three-dimensional models. This can also include GLTF models and many other 3D type data. This slide also shows an example communication session based on a high quality 3D room asset and for users that are represented in 3D based on a one camera capture solution. So in order to capture and render these users in 3D, we like to introduce a new mechanism to convert the depth data into a 2D image format that can be easily transmitted over existing 2D video transmission links. The method we propose here is very simple to implement. It has very little overhead on the processing side from the capture, and it is well supported in the browser as the decompression and the actual mapping of the visual information into the 3D space can all happen in the shader code. And you can see the formulas here on this slide. You practically convert the depth information into a grayscale color image. Uh, and this image, together with the color information, can uh, simply be mapped with a geometric function in the shader to be rendered in 3D. Ultimately, this can be served in two kind of flavors. On the left hand, you see what I just explained. You have uh, color and depth in a grayscale. And on the right hand, you can see chroma format where the background of the user is replaced with a chroma color. In this case, there is no depth information, so users cannot be rendered in 3D, but users can be rendered as transparent sprites. And this is particularly interesting for 360 degree type experiences where depth is actually not present. Further, the slide shows how our MCU operates. It is very similar to existing video conferencing MCUs. The, the difference to a traditional MCU is that it combines all streams into a mosaic instead of simply prioritizing and forwarding different resolutions of each stream. This gives a couple of advantages for our web clients as it can reduce the overhead in the decoding. This is based on the assumption that if you have one higher resolution uh, video that can be decoded on a GPU, it is much less processing intense than if you have to decode multiple smaller images on the same pipeline. In order to evaluate our depth conversion and transmission of this RGB plus depth video frames, we did a couple of tests and you can find a more extensive set of evaluation in the paper. What is important in our approach is that it performs very well in the transmission bit ranges that we expect 
for video conferencing. That means uh, two to three embed upload for such a RGB plus depth frames. There is differences between different encoding paradigms, so, but all in all, you get a nice distribution of bitrate to quality ratio. And from uh, 1.5 Mbit to 3 Mbit, you are in a PSNR range that can be considered as good quality. To better understand how our capture and our capture processing performs, we looked in detail into the different steps from acquiring the sensor data, loading them into memory, uh, having a specific processing component, and then loading them into the web browser. It's important to point out that these uh, different steps are completely modulized and very strictly separated. In this table, you can see a detailed overview of the different capture steps. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to go into all details presented in this table. There's more descriptions about this in the paper. What is interesting to note here is that the different steps create a little bit uh, more performance requirements than traditional video conferencing in terms of CPU processing, but also slight delay overhead. It is important to note here that some of these overheads could easily be reduced in a more operational setting. This improvement we expect on two sides. First, with a better memory mapping than we do now, you can easily decrease the delay, but also you can see currently processing is only working on the CPU level. You could move uh, this type of processing into the GPU and in this way decrease both the CPU load and the delay. However, this design is very beneficial for us as it uh, has a clear separation between components and from a research perspective, allows us to really evaluate and change components on a more individual level. We also measured the delay on the full end-to-end -end, uh, pipeline, that means capture, transport, and ultimately rendering. We are a little bit higher on delay from modern video conferencing solutions, and you can see a significant delay difference between using the central MCU versus a peer-to-peer -peer approach. As the MCU has to do decoding and encoding of all videos, currently we only utilized CPU encoding. If you would deploy hardware encoder, this delay would also be expected to shrink a little. However, there will always be a slight overhead in terms of delay on the benefit of the CPU performance in the end devices. To look at the difference in the end client performance, we did a set of simulation uh, studies where we went from 2 to 16 users for the color with a chroma background and 2 to 8 users for the color plus depths streams. The main difference between these two stream types is the amount of resolution that is transmitted for one user. For the lower resolution stream, you can see that a client can support up to eight users. This is after eight users, the client's getting unstable and simply cannot provide enough resources anymore to maintain a stable rendering quality. Whereas in the MCU situation for the smaller stream, there's after a certain point, not much increase in the actual resource usage. And similarly is the case for the higher resolution streams, so the 3D rendering, where after five users, the client becomes unstable. However, with the MCU scenario, many more clients can be supported and rendered at the same time. To further extend the evaluation of our system, besides the simulation, we also executed some tests with real users that were geographically distributed. You can see the results in the graph as shown in this slide. What is interesting to observe here is that the client performance will slightly drop in the 3D scenario from the 2D scenario. And this is the difference in rendering. So as a 2D sprite, users being rendered as a 2D sprite, or users being rendered as a 3D volumetric point cloud. And further, as expected, in the peer-to-peer -peer scenario, 
more CPU is used than in the MCU scenario, while the GPU load is staying roughly the same. With this work, we presented a VR-capable communication system based on extending existing video conferencing technology. Further, we presented a new way of converting depths to grayscale color images in order to transmit it over traditional 2D video pipelines. To reduce the resource demands in the end clients, we also introduced a central composition unit that can significantly reduce the CPU utilization in our web clients. Finally, our evaluation shows that photorealistic volumetric user representations in VR are possible with our system and the resource usage is somewhat similar to what we expect from existing high-class video conferencing solutions. We first consider that this type of RGB plus depth transmission will probably still be relevant for a foreseeable amount of time. This is because the most depth sensors but also the most augmented reality SDKs currently operate on this format. Further, we have a couple of improvements in mind. For example, moving from CPU to GPU-based encodings and shifting different processing capabilities between the end client and server components. Finally, more user evaluations are necessary to match the different system evaluations with the actual perception of users. This will ultimately help to fully understand how the different immersive communication services can benefit for different use cases and scenarios. Thank you very much for tuning in on this presentation and please feel very welcome to contact me on any of your preferred channels if you have any questions or comments.